So to be begin to tie all this together, uh, once again, this is intersections of environmental management and biosecurity and animal agriculture. And some key definitions we need to know uh, to move through today's presentation. Right here, uh, pathogens. These are disease causing microorganisms. And biosecurity are the procedures and best practices that we use to protect humans or animals against um, the impacts of pathogens, the spread of pathogens. And how um, pathogens can spread through a system, first and foremost, we think of vectors. So these are organisms, ourselves, animals, living things that can carry a pathogen to a host. And then inanimate objects, non-living objects that can carry pathogens are called fomites. So this would be equipment, tools, vehicles, etc. So there are strong links between biosecurity and uh, manure nutrient management and environmental management and animal agriculture. Um, so really a lot of the work that many of us have been doing for years um, is closely tied to biosecurity. Many of the practices that we um, recommend, design, implement uh, to prevent pollution from animal agriculture also prevent the spread of pathogens or toxins. Um, so these are pathogens and toxins that could um, arise from manure sources, mortalities, um, spoiled and contaminated feed, or other organic wastes associated with livestock and poultry production. And really there's similar goals overall. Sound environmental management and sound biosecurity both promote public health, food and companion animal health, and wildlife health. And you know all of these uh, populations of people and animals are are connected in the sphere that you know, we'd be concerned with for pollution prevention and promotion of biosecurity. And in the end, you know, it's to protect farms, ranches, the industry, and the people and animals of those industries um, from health, legal, and financial risks. So some more um, you know, exact linkages. Uh, we think about over the last several years having to deal with um, more or significant outbreaks of PEDV. It was closely tied to manure management as far as getting a stop to uh, these outbreaks. Um, so we had to deal with the pathogen and manure pits and storage, uh, the implications and land applied manure, and also the pathogen being persistent on equipment, uh, manure management, hauling and application equipment. Um, if you do have concerns about this particular issue or case study in general, uh, I'd recommend looking at uh, Minnesota-based vet med and extension resources. Um, that's a, a great first place stopping for information on PEDV. Uh, another big event in recent years, uh, the 2015 high path avian influenza outbreak uh, resulted in mass mortalities, um, primarily from euthanasia, but also um, a smaller amount directly from the disease. Uh, euthanasia was a um, stopgap sort of um, method uh, to prevent the spread of the disease further, but then we had to deal with all those mortalities, uh, the floor litter, the manure, and so composting was implemented there. Um, composting, um, the heat through the process reduced the threat of the pathogen and transformed the, race, the, the waste and reduced it um, to a material that could be land applied. So there was eventual safe agronomic use uh, of that material. But once again, just trying to drive home the point of strong links between um, biosecurity and animal waste management. So I've hinted at this already or started to introduce this topic and it will be related to um, our first technical presentation today. And this is how we think about pathogens making the rounds through a system. So uh, sort of as a review, it's gonna be through vectors and fomites, so living organisms, including ourselves, and then tools, equipment, and vehicles, the fomites. Um, so we think about who is traveling through livestock and poultry food systems. We've got technical service providers, including extension educators and RCS folks, et cetera. Manure service providers, and they're coming around to provide a service, they're bringing equipment, they're, um, exposing their equipment to manure at different farms. Uh, so we need to think about biosecurity for those sorts of uh, providers. Shared tools and equipment amongst um, neighbors and ag communities. 
And then also we have a lot of other folks coming and going. Um, pathogens could be making the rounds through the, the delivery of inputs and supplies and the um, harvest and export of animal-based products, um, whether it's animals themselves, dairy products, et cetera. All right, so uh, as I sort of try and wrap this down and uh, introduce some interesting research from our colleagues at University of Vermont, um, I feel like, uh, or I'm hypothesizing that producer risk perception and risk tolerance uh, may influence decision-making about environmental issues and biosecurity issues in a similar fashion. And one of our speakers is gonna explore that in the context of biosecurity but both are tied together with risk. What's the risk of an operation being exposed to a disease? What's the risk of an operation being involved in uh, a manure or environmental accident or spill? And then once again, many of us are educators, technical service providers, and we're part of this. All movement of goods and services through a system can spread disease. And we're gonna see um, an interesting modeled example of that. So um, much of the, or all of the research presented here today is a function of um, a USDA AFRI coordinated ag project. Um, here's the long title, I won't bore you with it. Um, Gabriella is gonna introduce the short title, but we wanna thank our PI, Dr. Julie Smith at University of Vermont. Uh, this project involves subcontracts and PIs uh, that are national in scope. And today we're gonna hear from some of the folks in the uh, STEGS lab, the Social Ecological Gaming and Simulation Lab at the University of Vermont. 